right. Welcome to today's show. So it is NAB. And in case you don't know, NAB is the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is a big trade show in the U.S. It's, I think, one of the biggest industry trade shows in the U.S. Um, at the same time, NAM, which is uh, for audio, uh, was also happening. So there's a lot going on. And there's also IPC in Europe. There's uh, one over in Asia. So there's a lot of different shows out there to that sort of focus on broadcast media, and that includes streaming. So we're talking streaming today, and I have uh, some things that I wanted to bring up. But as always, if you are watching, uh, we are live. So use the comments that I can see. And if you have something that you want to talk about, if you have a streaming question, um, throw it into the comments so that uh, we can talk about it together. Uh, that's, as you can see, I can bring up comments. I'd like to know where everyone is watching from, as always. And I want to welcome everyone to the show with that one. Welcome to the show. So uh, we have the Modern Eater Network is looking forward to this. Hey, have, have you been following? Oh, is that you're in Colorado? Is that what the C is? Um, I, what is your favorite pick from this year's NAB? I know what mine is. Uh, but I would love to hear what everyone else thinks in terms of um, what's going on with the show. If I look away a lot is because I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six screens in front of me, not counting my phone and another device over here. So I have a lot going on to try and manage today's show. Um, and to show you central control, if you um, use... Uh, different devices. Central Control is a very powerful piece of software that is like digital glue. Um, so you can use control surfaces and the control surfaces can talk to different computers and components and switchers and devices and Central Control itself can also have a timeline that can trigger different things at different times. Uh, it's a, it, it's almost two, you could devote an entire show to Central Control. That's how um, really um, in-depth it is. I uh, don't want to say what except it. And they've got a really good website. Um, he does a good job of explaining it. And there's all these different ways, um, different ways of using it. It's one of those things where it's so powerful that different people can use it in completely different ways. And they had a lot of big announcements. Um, they have a timeline-based macro system as with version 3.1 called Flex Macros. And the advantage to this is you work in a timeline, just like you would as if it was an edit thing. And you're not dealing with commands anymore. You're, you're dealing with blocks. And if all of a sudden you want this block to happen at five minutes as opposed to three minutes, you just grab this block and move it to five minutes. That's really unheard of in terms of like, you know, scheduling. Usually that's a top down list in a Google sheet or a spreadsheet or something like that. So to have this timeline view, I think it's going to be, um, make things a lot easier to deal with. Um, it's going to have global variables that can set from different commands and different sources. So you can actually have outside databases change your timeline depending upon other variables which can affect which goes on the screen. I mean, so it's almost like automating your whole process based on outside data. So you could have a poll, and based on the results of a poll and data that comes in, that could affect what camera gets selected, which is pretty cool. Uh, the teleprompter now has remote control from other instances of central control, so you can sort of distribute tasks. Uh, manual tracking, color-coded event tags, uh, which makes it easier to see things at a glance, and there are a lot of features in this. That's just the update. What's in central control is, even, is, is amazing. So if you don't already use... Uh, some sort of software to manage control surfaces and uh, streaming tools. I encourage you to look um, at Central Control. That's the website right over there. Uh, it is Central Control. I don't know what. Yeah, centralcontrol.io. So go check that out. Um, the next thing that uh, really piqued my interest. Actually, let me look, let me look at the uh, comments here. Uh, Ray B is saying hello from Indiana. Hey. Hello, and thanks for joining the uh, broadcast. Um, as always, I like to hear where people are viewing from. So if you haven't already chimed in to uh, let me know where you're viewing from, let me know. And if you are following NAB um, and have any things that really caught your eye that came out 
this year at NAB, put them in the comments. Let's talk about them or if you have questions. Um, this is also a live Q&A show. So if you have streaming questions or ideas, throw them in the comments. Let's have a discussion because this is live. I'm going to type in, this is live. And that will pop up <laughs> over here in a second. And then when it does, I will bring it up on the screen, which is to show you how fast your comments can be brought into the show. This is a live show. Love hearing from you. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was doo -doo -doo, uh, Bird Dog. And if you don't already follow Bird Dog, uh, their website is birddog with two Bs dot TV. Uh, they are having a big contest, um, having sold 25 thousand cameras and they're going to give away a big kit they have a lot of uh, they make cameras converters uh, play out and other NDI hardware so if you don't know what NDI is it is uh, putting your video SDI or HDMI putting your video on a standard Ethernet network you don't need special cabling you don't need special routers you don't need special anything it just puts it on regular networking. Now, putting a bunch of video on the network, it does tend to tax networks. So in essence, you almost have to become an IT specialist to make sure that you're not, you know, totally saturating a network with a bunch of cameras. Because if you put 4K, three 4K cameras are going to pretty much fill a single gigabit switch. And then if you want to put four and five cameras on there, you're not going to be able to get all that data at 4K through a single gigabit switch. So just understand that you're putting a lot of data through a switch. It's not like putting a server and a computer and everything that intermittently requests data. Video is a constant stream. It is a fire hose of data. Although you can go into the bird dog um, control panels and adjust how much data, it is still a fire hose of data. Um, if you saw in my wide shot, let me scroll up here. Um, I have a bird dog camera right here, which we will be talking about in a minute. I have some bird dog gear and um, I'm actually a fan of bird dog, uh, although I don't necessarily do a lot of production content. Uh, I don't do a lot of shows about bird dog. I guess this is going to count as one of those shows that I'm going to talk about bird dog a bit. Uh, Christopher Weller says, hello from France. Hello. To, hello to you. And again, I appreciate everyone chiming in where they are from and if you have any NAB questions or observations or things you saw that were really cool and you want to point out, um, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you have streaming questions, throw them into uh, the comments. Richard Turner says, the Bird Dog PX120 looks to be the most interesting item I saw from announcements. I agree. <laughs> a close second or maybe a bigger one once when the details come out is Dante Connect. That is going to be a big thing too because uh, Bird Dog says that they do Dante, which is great because Dante is, for those who don't know, Dante is a protocol that puts audio on a standard Ethernet network. Um, however, Dante, because the audio requirements are much lower, Dante has a lot of other features in it that um, NDI does not. Like Dante, you could actually string two Ethernet cables to the same direction, and you're not going to get double. It, it knows one is primary and the other one is backup. Um, there's a lot of smarts in Dante, and it is super low latency because audio doesn't require as much compression and things like that. But the thing is, Dante and NDI have different requirements. So if you have a managed router, like Dante wants a certain flow control to be off, but NDI wants that flow control to be on. So trying to run both protocols on the same switch can be touching. <laughs> but yes, uh, the X120 um, is the new camera that uh, Bird Dog just announced. I wish da -da -da -da, they had... Um, I'm trying to look on their page. Yeah, NAB show. Do I click on that? No, I don't want to go to the NAB show. I want to go to, okay, is this the announcement page? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's go back to the to the two, two shot. Okay, the X120. Now, Bird Dog has made 
lots of cameras, lots of converters in, out, sideways, up, down, USB. Um, they've made a lot of stuff. If, if there's one company that is all in on NDI, it is Bird Dog. And this camera, as well as all of the other cameras until now that Bird Dog has made have been full NDI, which means it is the lowest latency, the quickest to send that video frame across the network, um, but is the biggest data rate. And these all require an ethernet plug. Oh, you can't see it. Let me move it in a little more. Uh, they all require an ethernet plug. So they're powered over the ethernet and I've got an HDMI out. Um, and that's it. You really only need one cable to take the video out, control back in, tally when it's on, PTZ control, you know, all, all these things. There's even comms, although I don't think there's a headphone jack on this one. They have comms as well. And this is about 100 megabits a second, maybe you know, give or take, because as I said, it's adjustable. The X120, this thing, you'll notice it has antennas. It is the first offering from Bird Dog that is not full, H, uh, full NDI. It is NDI HX, which is a much smaller bit rate because it's compressed more. It's compressed using H.264 or H.265. So instead of one frame or so, you're going to be maybe two frames or more in the X120. But if all your, you know, if you have a system where you can adjust the timing of the cameras, that's not really going to be an issue. But ultra low data rate, which means instead of 100 megabits, you may be down at 20, which means for HD, you can put a lot more cameras on that network. Secondly, because it's a lower data rate, Wi-Fi becomes much more of an option. And that way, you're able to have these cameras powered in the corner and you don't have to run an ethernet cable to them. You can catch them over Wi-Fi. And if you've ever seen, um, I have seven tips for streaming success that I wrote for Streaming Media Magazine. Uh, let me hold one of those up. Streaming Media Magazine. Uh, the seven tips for streaming success. Tip number one. Rule one is bring your own network. So you don't go into a venue, bring your Wi-Fi camera and hook up to the Wi-Fi's, the venue's Wi-Fi. No, you bring your own Wi-Fi. You bring your own, you know, Wi-Fi access points and only your devices are on those things. But this looks great. And then you get a 20X optical zoom. You get all of the new uh, color controls and everything. And the introductory price is less than a thousand dollars. Okay. Let's just say having a PTZ, a good PTZ from a reputable manufacturer, not from AliExpress, having a good reputable PTZ for under a thousand dollars is a thing. It is is like that alone is an amazing thing. 20x optical zoom, Sony XMOR R sensor, that is going to be really cool. Um, Wi-Fi 5 with NDI HX3, that is going to be pretty impressive, and it's got Wi-Fi in it. I'm like, that's four, like, big steps in one little camera. And so I am really interested in seeing this baby um, in person. Although they say ships in Q2. So we shall see if they're able to maintain Q2. Because as we all know, uh, in this day and age, trying to keep to a manufacturing timeline and or a delivery timeline is a really tough challenge. So fingers crossed for Bird Dog to make that happen. Uh, so thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, Richard, uh, for chiming in there. The Bird Dog X120, I agree with you. That is, I think for me, and it won an award. I just found out this morning that yesterday it was given an, an, an AB uh, or somebody gave it an award. And I think it's rightly deserved. It's like, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, wait, what? And then you hear, read more statistics and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> one of those head turners. Um, so kudos to the bird dog team for uh, throwing that out there. Um, Fleet Manager is a new tool whereby if you have a bunch of bird dog stuff deployed, you can see it all in one list. You can, you know, see where it's at, what the status is and the settings and everything uh, where it says, you know, 
status, IP address, subnet, device name, stream name, serial number, firmware version, and if your firmware is out of date on the device, you can actually update the software from this interface. You don't have to like go, then go over to the camera and do it. I'm like, ooh, okay, that's going to be pretty cool. I mean, I don't have a fleet of them, but for uh, guys who do shows, for uh, touring, you know, setups, being able to deploy and then just look on one screen and see the status. Now, oh wow, they just you know released a new update for all the, you know, P200s. Let me go do, 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 update. That's going to be neat. NDIPTZ control. This for me is another really big one um, because I am using a Surface tablet here. Um, it's right over here. I'm using a Surface tablet, and the reason I purchased the Surface tablet is because I needed something to control my PTZ camera on the desk here without having a big laptop or something like that. Uh, so I got a 10 inch Surface Go. So it's a 10 inch tablet but it runs full Windows, which means it has access to the entire NDI tools suite. Just it's fully above board, Intel processor, everything runs perfectly great because it's, it's a real computer, although it's in a tablet. And that has worked great because I'm able to call up the uh, screen of the NDI camera, whatever it is, I'm able to pan, tilt, zoom, I'm able to set presets and everything, and that's built into NDI tools which is free from NDI TV. Actually, let me um, add another tab here. NDI.TV. If you um, are interested in NDI, NDI TV is the central location for um, NDI tools. Okay. Okay. And you come down here, and then you can download 5.5 for Windows or Mac OS. The thing you don't see is for iOS. You don't see for Android. You don't see for Linux. So if you have an iPad or an Android tablet or phone, there's no NDI tools for you. There was literally, I, I had looked for something where I could do what Studio Manager or um, Studio Monitor does on my Surface because I've got an iPad, you know, it's like, it'd be nice to be able to use the iPad and not have to buy a new machine. But they're really, you know, there's a couple camera apps for iOS and Android, but there isn't a studio monitor app or a screen sharing app. <laughs> don't forget threaded lens. Yes, that, I don't anticipate using that, but yes, for people who are outdoors and everything and need to not have to like crank the shut up to two million, Having a threaded lens so you can put an ND filter on it is going to be very handy. Thank you, very, thank you, Richard. Um, but continuing, like right here, for Windows and Mac OS. So there was like a huge gaping hole for iOS tools. And go back to NAB. Oh, come on, really? You reset? The, oh, I had to go back to the top. So here you go, NDI PTZ control is an iPad app and iPhone controlling your cameras on a phone, like controlling these cameras on a phone. That's pretty slick. And uh, of course, I have it. There it is, the PTZ. It's going to open that up. And you can see ah, <laughs> live feed from the camera. If I had other cameras, they'd be listed right here on the side. And if I grab my finger and I start moving this around, it moves. And then over here in the top right, you see those little, uh, oh, wait, I can point on that camera. Up here in the corner, if I click on those, now I have my, I have my camera settings. It used to be you would, what you would do is you would dial in, you know, use the web browser to actually access the configuration page on each camera. And then to go to the other camera, you have to like log into that camera, log into this camera. And there's so many different settings in there. And here you go. I have exposures. I have my color matrix. I have the picture controls and I have my white balance. And those are the four tabs. And then I can make that go away. If I double tap on the picture, the picture comes up full screen and you can see at the top of the picture, wait, right here, I have it set to low resolution because NDI includes both a low resolution proxy and a high resolution stream. I'm looking at the low res proxy here, but you can see that 
I'm, I'm wireless on my iPad and I'm still exceeding the local network um, ability to get all those frames. It's too many, too much data for the local network to be able to wirelessly deliver to my iPad at this point, even with the low resolution selected. But tap it again, tap it twice, oh, hit the little close, and there you go. And then down here at the bottom, wait, I'm gonna use this. Down here at the bottom, you've got your presets. And then you can adjust your pan, tilt, and zoom speeds. You could zoom in, this is gonna become scary. <laughs> you can zoom out and I'm doing all of that with this iPad app which I have to say is far more elegant than NDI tools but it this this is a unique product a unique offering you can see the video resolution is 640 by 360 so that is the low resolution feed that is coming here and th this tool this you know thing right here for me is I think going to be huge because Bird Dog is the first to really offer this suite of software in uh, on the iPad. Now if I go into the iTunes store, see if it remembers the page that I was on. Of course not. None of this software is going to remember anything. Um, N D I P T. There it is. It is right here. It is 20 bucks. And honestly, I don't think that's a lot of money. I think that's a fair price, especially considering the fact that when you purchase something on iTunes, it's available to all your devices. So you're not buying one copy. You're buying a copy that will live on as many iPads and iPhones as you have. So you could be buying 30 copies to be used by 30 different people in 30 different locations. On, under the one account. So, you know, I hope Bird Dog doesn't, you know, <laughs> doesn't forget me saying that, but that's, that's the reality of when you purchase a license through iTunes, you're purchasing it for all your devices on that account, not for each device. Um, so 20 bucks, I think that's a really good price. So again, let me introduce myself. Uh, da -da -da -da. My name is Anthony Barocas. I am the chief gearhead here at IABA Communications, and we are talking NAB 2023. Uh, if you are just joining the stream, um, the comments are open, the comments are live. So if you saw something at NAB that really jumped out at you and you're like, that is cool, put it in the comments, let's talk about it. If you have a streaming question, put it in the comments, let's talk about it, because um, this is a live show. If you're on Facebook, you can follow me at IABA Communications. And if you are on YouTube, which I think most people are, it is the Aiba Tech Thoughts channel on YouTube. And that is literally all the titles I have. <laughs> so let us go back to the picture in picture. And uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. X120. NDI HX3 over Wi-Fi, HX3 over Ethernet, PoE. It has both SDI and HDMI out, so it's still fully usable with baseband workflows. It's a drop-in replacement. Um, USB-C with US UVC support for Zoom, Teams, Barco, ClickShare, etc. cetera. Um, it has the Sony sensor, 20X optical zoom, color matrix, Kelvin control, and a little, that, oh, that this one doesn't have it, but the new ones have a little OLED screen on the front, a little LCD screen so that you can walk up to it and you can see what the IP address is, what the name of it is, so that when you go back to your computer, you can type up that IP address, or if you see it in the list, you know which one is which, if you didn't already go in and rename them. So that is cool. Uh, Silicon 2 update. Uh, Silicon 2 is a is the software underlying the cameras and BirdDog has spent quite some time working on this to sort of unify the, the software underlying all the cameras to make it easier to deploy updates, which I think is the reason there is doo -doo -doo -doo, the new fleet manager. The fleet manager probably is uh, able to exist because of the work that they did in Silicon 2. And then there's an Android TV monitor as well. 
Uh, this turns Android-enabled TVs into an NDI monitor. Now, this one's 50 bucks, but again, like your Android accounts, once you purchase the app, it's yours. Uh, I know there is a, an app for um, Apple TV. It's $99, but you know, if you need 10 copies of it on 10 you know, Apple TVs, it's still just $99. It's not $99 each. So these may seem like, oh, it's just a little app. It's, but why is it 50 bucks? Well, it's 50 bucks because they're only gonna sell it to you once and then you can deploy it across multiple devices. And it takes, it takes plus, you know, things, it takes chutzpah and time and energy and resources to make these things, especially where they don't exist otherwise. Five year warranty update. Uh, Central 2.0 Enterprise, I don't know what that is. If you do, chime in. Cloud Connect, um, NDI, uh, NDI, Bird Dog has this thing called Cloud. And what it is is your devices can go up to the cloud and then I can have a camera like this one in another city connected to the cloud and then I can access it and control it and see it from here as if it was in my office. So NDI Cloud, um, Bird Dog Cloud is that glue between different places on the internet. Um, NDI also in uh, version 5 introduced a similar technology called NDI Cloud, uh, but Bird Dog was first. Uh, Play is their new, uh, newish um, piece of hardware that literally just takes NDI and converts it to HDMI. So you put it on the back of the TV and it lets it spit things out. One of the really cool things with this is if you have multiple TVs that you wanna have appear as a video wall, that's one of the features that Play enables. You can have four of them, you can have uh, one, three, nine of them, and use Play and Bird Dog software and it'll automatically split that signal up and spread it out across each of them in sync. So that is uh, a very cool, there it is, video wall. And as you can see on that uh, image, let me zoom into the image. It takes uh, this one source and splits it up across all those different plays. And you can see them all listed there. And it does that automatically and lets you deliver video all. And that is the end of their NDI page. Uh, but so I think Bird Dog had a huge, a huge um, NAB this year. And if you think uh, that is going to be interesting to you. Let me know. Uh, if you're watching. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, okay. There we go. Got some new. Took a while for those to come in. Greetings from Germany. Always happy about new information. Yes. Happy to be here for you. More European greetings from Matt Driver. Hello from England. Hello to you or good day. And uh, I'm interested in what you guys think of this year's NAB. What announcements you saw coming out of um the las vegas convention center i think this guy right here is going to be the big thing um especially when it ships in q2 so it's not that far away uh but the new x120 is going to be um very interesting for ndi workflows not for all streaming workflows but as i said it does have um hdmi it does have hdmi it does have regular ethernet um, SDI and an RS-232 so you can remotely control it if you're already using RS-232 to control a PTZ head you can drop this in and, and get this technology so that's and you can see right over here the um, the little display on the front that tells you this is bird dog s120 this is the address uh, and this is the frame rate so that is uh, a quick look at the 120 Thank you for letting me know in the comments that the audio had gone silent. I appreciate that. That's what the comments are for. Uh, do, do, do we lost your audio? No sound. Ah, okay. So let me, I want to hear how 21 IP fits, video fits in. Okay. As I was saying, I don't know how much or where it cut out, but um, Blackmagic finally adopted um, a video networking standard. Vid Blackmagic has not adopted IP video the whole time that NDI has been around, since about 2015, almost 10 years, almost a decade NDI has been around. 
and black magic has stubbornly not adopted IP, any IP standard for um, their devices. And as of this NAB, black magic has finally put their chips on the table. They have finally made a bet, although I don't consider it a bet. They finally, you know, picked one and they picked the SMPTE standard 2110 IP. And as you can see from this listing on their webpage, this card, which has three video channels, this card that has three video channels, comes with a 10 gigabit port because they know nobody's computer comes with 10 gigabit. And 2110 IP, which is a SMPTE standard, has such a high data rate that 10 gigabit is where you start. If you are going to have a broadcast room full of 2110, you're going to need even more. Um, and that's why I'm kind of disappointed I'm in this choice. Um, because Black Magic has really, really led the way in terms of when they when they brought the ATEM to market, it was like here is this broadcast level switcher for nine ninety nine, which blew the market away. Then they came out with the A ten mini, and it blew the market away. And they came out with the pocket cinema camera. Well, not the first one, but the later ones, the four K, the the one with the micro four thirds, and it blew the market away. Um, Black Magic has a history of making high level production really affordable and approachable and usable to a vast market that can't afford, could not afford it before, because you may not know it, but the ATAM switchers, which Blackmagic has, actually belong to a different company that Blackmagic acquired. Those switchers used to be probably ten to $15,000 minimum and up to $30,000. And then for Blackmagic to buy that company and then come out with a small version, not the same ones, a small version for $9.99 for $1,000. One, not 10, not 15, not 30, one. Um, was a really, it just broke through the barrier for that level of production quality. To see this decision to go with 2110, which requires a really high-end networking infrastructure in order to make that work, and it just, I don't know why they didn't go with NDI. I really don't. Because NDI has proven you can do lossless video over IP, and they have proven it for almost a decade. And to have Blackmagic say, yeah, we understand that's cost-effective and proven and can immediately tie our hardware into hundreds of different cameras, converters, and switchers, and everything, we're going to go with this. Um, and I, I apologize, that's sort of a rant, but um, that is confusing to me that um, Blackmagic, who has a history of giving you <laughs> a 4K multi-input live switcher with 10 12G SDI outputs, 8 inputs, 10G Ethernet and more for only $5,000, including the control surface. And then to look at the thing right next to it, it says, yeah, this is, we're going to give, put your video on, you know, traditional TCP IP. And you're going to have to like completely rip out every piece of networking hardware you have in your studio and replace it with 10G and higher in order to make use of it. It just, that's a hard one for me to wrap my mind around because those two choices don't seem like the same company to me. Um, here's a 20, 2110 IP converter, 3G, and guess what? It's going to have to have a 10 gigabit in there. <laughs> they came out with a 12K camera for only $6,000. That is making this high-level stuff affordable. And that's what NDI is. NDI is making IP networking video affordable. And they didn't go with that. So... Ah, I just I just don't get it. So that is um, my thoughts on.
black magic not choosing NDI for their IP standard, but instead going with the 2110 um, standard. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts if you think 2110 is going to take over and NDI, everything using NDI is just suddenly going to go away. I don't think so. Um, I think NDI has a massive foothold, massive adoption, massive acceptance, both software, hardware, infrastructure. You can buy switches. You know, Netgear came out with a switch that is specifically for NDI. Um, just so you, it, it has <laughs> controls that understand what NDI needs. You toggle them on and NDI is happy. Um, so from camera through network, through delivery, switching software and everything, NDI has a full, easily affordable, approachable solution from end to end. And to see Blackmagic go with uh, 2110 I, I, is something I just don't quite understand. So I, I apologize if that is not your thought of um, what the, you know, your take on Blackmagic. I'm trying to turn the audio up a little bit. As I know somebody said it's a little quiet. I try to go to 10 dB. Uh, again, I apologize, the microphone died, and uh, it's a battery-powered boom mic I have. And so I just yanked it out, and I'm using the microphones in the camera itself, which obviously are not as not as directional and uh, able to pick me up as well. So in a live show, things will happen. You adapt and move on. Um, next up, let's scroll down here. Um, yeah, the, the television studio, though, these other things... This ATM 4ME Constellation, man, they are killing it with this Constellation line. I love these things. I mean, any input, any output, any routing, they're crazy good. Crazy, crazy, crazy good. And then the Television Studio 4K8, um, I've been fairly reluctant to get into 4K with regards to streaming because I don't think there's a whole... People watching on devices and computers aren't really going to care about 4K. The HD looks just as good. People watching on a big screen at home through a Roku or Apple TV or whatever, they're not watching live content mostly. They're much mostly streaming pre-recorded and broad, broadcast content. So the viewing screens for 4K streamed content, I think are very small. But in terms of just production, like you're gonna do an award show, uh, a live show or, or a concert or something like that, this is gonna be really, really nice to have full 4K all the way through soup the nuts. Um, that is that is a really, re it's an amazing price for the hardware you're getting. It, that just makes it whew, uh, amazing to me, at, at least. Again, I don't know, you let me know what you think. Uh, they've got their video hubs, 12G, for starting at 13. Um, uh, the pocket, ver pocket cinema camera now understands vertical which uh, I think there is a lot of content being specially made for vertical. I mean, we're not saying you couldn't rotate your camera in film before. I mean, so I, I don't know exactly what is different because I've done that before. I have a camera right here that's rotated and mounted vertically. Um, so now this is a thing. You can shoot films with a pocket cinema camera vertically. I, I was doing that a year ago. Um, so... I don't know exactly. Maybe there's a gyroscope in there and it knows that it's vertical. but And then they, of course, would have to update DaVinci Resolve, which they did, uh, to now, instead of you know knowing 16 by 9, everything is now 9 by 16. And understanding that that's the frame rate, that's the frame size, and it's not a rotational thing. It's not a crop of the wider version. It, this is the frame. Um, so we shall see if you know if you apply a transition effect it now understands how that frame works differently. Um, Sennheiser had an interesting announcement. I think it was actually during NAM, um, which is the North American Sound Expo, um, and they talked about a new wireless audio protocol. Because, as you may or may not know, um, let me see if I can find that. Two plus S E N N H E I S E R Sennheiser W M A S is what we're looking for, and 
It's the wireless multi-channel audio system. And I don't know which one to click on. I'll try the top one. And what it is, is instead of each mic talking to a receiver, you're essentially establishing a everything talks to everything and it's bi-directional and you're all using one big channel one like tv channel but that may sound like well you're using it more spectrum this is really meant for large productions like a stage show like uh, broadway where a lot of microphones get used in each stage all day or every night and they have got a they have a very nice chart here showing you on the left here you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve you have twelve discrete channels that don't interfere with each other in a typical tv channel spectrum which are getting more and more compact as the fcc packs the channels down into less and less spectrum um, over there on the orange swath is one WMAS, WMAS channel. But in that, you could have 20, 30 different devices. So you're able to more effectively deal with large production in a given amount of space. Plus, you don't have to worry about multipath reception. You don't have to worry about you know, transmitters interfering with each other because they actually use each other. It's all data at this point. And it also includes return channels. So you could potentially have a belt pack where a person on stage is talking. They have a microphone, but they also have an earphone. They don't need two belt packs. That one belt pack can both send data and receive data. And that data it's receiving could include the return channel. So that that way, it simplifies the deployment. It simplifies, you know, all this clutter that people have to wear. Because I've seen, like, a guitar player is singing and the guitar and the, the in-ear monitor. So they got three belt packs on their back. And that's just one person. You know, the guitarist, the, the accompanying singers and everything. That's a lot of stuff. And I think this uh, WMAS, WMAS, from Sennheiser is a really good idea. Right now, it's just Sennheiser. Um, it is a Sennheiser protocol to work with Sennheiser devices. It's not an open protocol. It's not a an open standard that Sennheiser is adopting. It is something that Sennheiser has come up with that they plan on implementing in the future on new devices. But I think this is actually pretty big news because as things get more and more smushed, you know, who knows the 600 megahertz band may be gone soon and sold to cell phones for data and then you've got even more tv stations you know i know in the dfw area from channel 2 to channel 59 there are um i think four open channels i think four open channels in the dfw area and that's not a lot of space to squeeze all the microphones that get used all the time into, especially when each one needs to carve out its own slice and battle everybody else. Um, so if you've got a lot of microphones on one stage, you're going to need multiple channels. And God forbid, if something else happens nearby and somebody else has got a microphone like a newscaster in the, in the lobby starts doing a broadcast and they've got wireless it's going to have to be on the same channels I mean, because the other channels are taken up by TV. So I think um, WMAS is a uh, can be a big advancement. And Richard Turner, who's, who seems to be reading my mind today, Rode had a few nice ones too. One that piqued my interest was the Rode ME. They have this, uh, the Wireless Go To Firmware Update. Um, allows you to record in wave, not the special you know internal format. It allows you to record in wave, so you can just drag and drop your files. Awesome. The really thing that piqued my curiosity is um, allows you, as it says, to start and stop the onboard recording by pushing a button on the transmitter, as opposed to it just always recording. You know, and people are walking around. You're getting ready, and it's half hour of stuff I've got to like cut off. You know, when we get ready to start, start cameras, start recording. 
that just makes so much more sense. <laughs> that I think is, is a, a great, uh, can I put a link for the Sennheiser thing you're talking about? Um, I just look for WMAS and Sennheiser. Um, this is not connected to the one I have on, oh wait, do I, da, 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 I don't think this is on, Let's see if I'm on Facebook here. F-A-C-E, no, I'm not, it's, it's asking me to log in. Um, so the, the road go to, will even unlock more features. So that I think is really, really cool. But another really cool feature, because I know people who have the go-to, and Rode is one of those companies that just keeps adding capabilities to things that you've already bought. You know, being able to record Wave was not an advertised feature, but you bought it anyway, because you liked what it offered. And now, it's better. And being able to start and stop recordings from the transmitter, that was not an advertised feature, but you bought it anyway, because you liked what it had. And now you get, that I think is just really, really cool. Um, and the Rod Rodecaster Pro 2 wireless microphone connectivity. This is really cool. And they have a demo on here where you can take, they have a picture of it, they don't. Um, now this applies to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Uh, direct, okay, only the Rodecaster Pro 2. So it's the new Rodecaster Pro mixer has the ability to receive your wireless go to microphones and the wireless ME, which um, Richard mentioned. Um, the ME is their new microphone, which we'll get to as we scroll down the page. It's going to receive it in the mixer. You don't need a receiver because it's going to use the Bluetooth or whatever that's in the receiver to receive it, <laughs> which is amazing. They say it's the world's first compact microphone system. Um, I, I don't know, it might actually be one of the first that allows you to transmit directly to receivers that are in the mixer. Either way, it's it's only one channel. It's not like you're going to have four of them received. Um, but it's still really handy because I literally just last week set up in a studio a where they have a Go, a, a Rodecaster Pro, a, receiver, a, a Go to receiver with the switching and the transmitter. And I have to have the receiver because until NAB, you couldn't receive it in the mixer. So I have right next to the mixer, I have the receiver standing right there. And now with the software update, I can eliminate that. That's cool. That is, that is really awesome. Okay, let's continue down the page. Streamer X. Um, this little thing is really intriguing. It has an XLR on the back. Okay, well, it's an XLR or quarter inch or headphone jack, uh, as you can see, you can, I can zoom in because it's a touch screen. So let's zoom in on this thing. You can see um, that left button, the pink one or the purple one, depending on what you were going to call that color, can be microphone or headset or wireless. So I'm kind of guessing it might have that wireless microphone capture capability too, or it might just be Bluetooth. I don't, I don't really know. So you've got that adjustment knob and you get a headphone knob so that you're monitoring level. It's got four sound pads, plus you see the left and right arrow, it's got banks, so you can cue music and then change bank and cue a sound. That's cool. It's also an HDMI pass-through and capture device for camera. Now, I don't know why there's a camera button, why you would want to like blank your camera, turn your camera off and then turn your camera on, uh, unless you could put a slide when you're mute muted your camera. Um, but this is pretty slick. I mean, being able to have that one XLR input, the headphones, and also your camera capture device, that's pretty slick. And they say it, it comes, you can apply all of your Rode Caster Pro filters using the software. And the software is not mentioned right there. Um, do, 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 the um, Unify, yeah, the Unify software. The thing that I have written them, I have not gotten an answer on yet, is whether you can program this with your settings for audio enhancement, compressor, de or whatever, program it, and then you don't need to have a computer connected to it, whether it can just process that and then you could hook it into your um, computer to, or, or hook it, even hook the output directly into a hardware mixer. Um, 
I don't know if it has the ability to save those settings, like you're just using the software to set it, or if it's literally just capture and then the software does all of the processing. I don't know. Uh, that I have not got an answer before today's show. The Duo, however, sort of uh, uh, um, applies to that because the Duo, I think you mentioned the Duo. Streamer X might go well with Yolo Box Pro. You know, I had to mention that. Um, it might only if you can embed the software settings. That's what I was kind of getting at. If you can't embed your audio processing into the Streamer X and it requires a PC to do all the actual processing and it's not in the Streamer X, then it doesn't help at all. It's useless. Um, it's only, it, it, then it's really destined or made for um, video game streamers so that they can have the fast loop through for gameplay. They could capture the video. They've got their microphone on the big, you know, look, I'm really cool boom arm that blocks their face and, um, and sounds. So that when somebody, you know, pays them, you know, $5 in their gameplay, ka you know, they can play a sound. That's uh, really what I think it was designed for. Could be used in other places like with the Yolo box and other hardware like an ATEM or something like that, but only if the processing can be embedded into the unit. And I'm really sadly going to guess that that's not the case. If, yeah, if you can, if you can do it without the PC. And I'm gonna guess the answer is no. So that's where this thing, this is the Roadcaster Duo with four sliders, duo with four sliders, uh, because it has two microphone inputs. I don't know why they don't give you a front and back photo on this page, this is really dumb. Um, but this gives you two microphone inputs, then your USB input, your Bluetooth input. Um, it's got a, a phone input on the back. Uh, let's zoom in on this. You can see it's got two headphone outputs on there. And um, like, the Rodecaster Pro and others, it's all in the mixer. Every, all your processing and everything is in the mixer. And, oh, another thing about the Pro is they gave it the ability to do sub-mixes for each headphone output. So you can actually, like, turn up and down the levels for all of your inputs for each channel separately. Very cool. And this one, too. So you can see over here, it's actually telling you what those sounds are on the sound pads, which is really nice. Oh, is it showing you where my finger is? Look at that. That's pretty cool. There's my finger. Um, you know, you get the banks, you get the headphone jack in the front, which is actually a headset jack, not just headphones. Um, so this looks like a very nice tool. You can see it's got uh, mic one, mic two, Bluetooth, and I think that's USB. And then it's got USB return. Uh, it's got a couple other things on there. It can record. Obviously, you see the, the indicator at the top. It's recording. It's got a stop button. It's got, you know, amount of space left. It's got Wi-Fi. Um, so this is a really nice thing. It's sort of like your Roadcaster Pro Mini, you know. So they call it the Roadcaster Duo. I think this is a really cool product because I looked at the Pro and I'm like, that's a chunk, a really big chunky thing I need for like one or two mics. I really don't need this this much hardware. I really wish it was smaller. And look at that, they made a smaller one. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, if it does, if it's like basically like I think it is, I'm all in. That's 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 a really nice piece of equipment. I like that a lot. Uh, the pod mic, they added USB to the pod mic that was just XLR. Uh, they they made a backpack that can hold things. Yay. Uh, they made a charging case. I think they're the last company to make a charging case. I think they, uh, uh, like, uh, Rodecaster, Rode made a charging case for microphones that they have had out for years. Whereas other companies literally shipped the microphones in the charging case. Um... <laughs> On the bright side, they made a charging case. It's a nice looking charging case. It looks like a fabric, but it's actually got the charger inside. Um, I don't know how much power it has, it's pretty small. On the downside, like most other um, charging cases, and I did, um, I apologize, I'm gonna walk over and get it. For streaming media, I did a review of this Full Aim 1000. Oh, it's backwards because I got the, the mirror on. 
Um, I did a review of this full A1000, and in this box, underneath the manual, comes with this big charging case right out of the box. Don't need to buy it separately. And inside there are my microphones and the, re and the receiver. It's going to close on you, but that's life. The problem is, I need these other things too. I need the lavalier microphone, I need the cable to connect it to the camera, and then I needed another cable to connect it to my iPad, and I want the little windscreens and everything. And look, here it's all protected. No, but I still need to bring that. So, kudos to the first company, of which there are none, Kudos to the first company that makes a little charging case with space for everything else we also need to bring. Because I will admit, I literally just, I packed this whole thing. In which case, the charging case is, it doesn't need to be a rugged little case because I have to bring everything anyway. So I literally packed this whole thing in my bag because I need all those other accessories. I need the lavaliers, I need the clips, I need the connector into my phone, I need the connector into my DSLR, I need all those other pieces and if I don't have those other pieces it sort of defeats the purpose of the charging case. Look it's all, you can take it with you and toss it in your bag. Well I can toss it in the bag but it doesn't include everything else I need. So it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, again, I uh, will cycle back. We're, out, we're out, actually over an hour. Uh, my name is Anthony Barocas. I'm the chief gearhead at IABA Communications, and uh, we are talking NAB. Uh, if, if you are an iPad streamer, uh, there's an app called Switcher Studio, and Switcher Studio, wait for it. All right, so Switcher Studio makes software that you can use your iPad or iPhone to do multi-camera live switching. I've written about this in Streaming Media Producer many times. It is a, and I've used it for years. Um, it is a fantastic app, very solid, very polished. Um, it is the most polished of the tools out there. I, it's my opinion, but um, I will say that I feel it is the most polished um, app in terms of production, and it also gives you the most polished looking product as well for delivery, as you can see by these um, streaming examples. Um, one of the things that they announced, do, 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 here it is. Now you can use professional cameras, and this has been a big thing. It's not that you can use professional cameras. It is an HDMI, or now with NAB, uh, Asun announced um, SDI as well. You can have a hardware interface. And when I asked them about this years ago, I says, listen, what I want is I want a little puck that I can plug HDMI in that shows up in Switcher Studio. Um, and I understand they're a software company. They don't want to get into hardware. But this company was making this CMO. And the CMO allows you to input an HDMI source into your, cam into your iPhone and it appears to your iPhone as a camera. Now, we already know that the iPhones have two or three cameras. This is like a fourth possible source. So it integrates into the software of the iPhone, which is great. Um, then the Switcher Studio software lets you select that fourth source as your camera, and then you're still using Switcher Studio from the iPhone all the way back and things like that. Um, the things you can't do is like Switcher Studio gives you full camera control from the switching device, which is, you know, another part of the building. So you're able to like adjust the shutter speed, the color temperature, the iris, what's no iris, um, the aperture, the color, the tint, you know, you're, you've got like five different sliders for different things you can control that does not get passed through to your DSLR or whatever you're using. And I see this as really useful in three specific cases. You know, people are saying, oh, I can now use a DSLR to film, you know, stuff. I'm like, the cell phones already give you three cameras, you know, uh, a 3X telephoto, a normal, and a super wide. If you want to now use your GoPro through this, through the iPhone, why wouldn't you just use the wide angle on the iPhone? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Where it does really make a difference is if you're doing corporate, and they have a podium and people are going to walk up and plug their laptop into a, a plug on the podium to be shown on the screen and you can't ask each one of them to install the screen grabbing software you just want to sort of grab it on its way to the screen 
Now you can use this piece of hardware, which is like the number one use, I think. You can use this piece of hardware to just be in that pathway and grab that HDMI, hands it off to the camera, hands it off to the iPhone, and then the iPhone passes it back to everything else. And now, no matter what happens on that podium, whatever they want to pl plug in or play or whatever, you're just grabbing the video feed as it goes by. You're sort of just tapping it and sending it off to production. And that is so, so useful in terms of corporate and event production. It makes a huge difference. Also, in terms of uh, stage production, like plays and dance recitals and sports or things like that, anywhere where you need a long zoom um, camcorder that can, like, you know, follow the action a little wider or a little closer. Here's the one person, the okay, here's the second person, you know, and, and you can have this dynamic long zoom, but with a really, you know, long focal length from 20x or whatever. That is not available in an iPhone. Uh, you can digitally zoom in, it's not the same. Um, having a real 20x optical zoom camera can now be connected into your Switcher Studio uh, solutions. And lastly, if you wanted to use a DSLR with a prime lens for that really shallow depth of field cinematic look, um, you can now do that and bring that in because that's real optical depth of field as opposed to pseudo fake depth of field, which I actually don't think uh, works for third party apps. It only works in Apple's internal iPhone camera. So um, being able to utilize um, a real DSLR with a real shallow, de shallow depth of field lens is the third real practical use I see for um, the SEMO on Switcher Studio. So I think that, you know, finally, you know, so many people have been asking for, how can I connect my DSLR into the, I the iPad for years? And now there's an answer right there. Just go get that, connect it, run it, done. Um, that I think is a, is a big announcement. It came out just before NAB, but it's, it's, a, it's essentially an NAB announcement. And that an answers, that basically finally puts that question to rest. The only downside is that um, Switcher Studio, as a software company, does not have control over the external hardware and software. So they're sort of at the whim of Asun, Axun. And if Axun decides next year that not enough sales, we're stopping, then all of a sudden there will not be a product that works. Um, and I say that as someone who has used a, a little pan tilt um, controller for iPhones um, called the Motor, and that was out years ago, and then the company stopped making them. And Switcher Studio had this pan tilt zoom, can, you know, and then for a little bit they didn't. And then DJI came out with uh, their Go um, DJI mobile version of gimbals, and now they're reliant on DJI for that pan tilt capability, which is really good. Uh, and very handy. Uh, so it is really dependent upon um, the developments of outside companies, which is a precarious place to be, I feel. And um, if it is a solution that you are looking for, this right now is awesome. And it'll, you know, even if they decide to stop making it, it'll probably work for many years. Like my motors, M-O-T-R-R, my motors still work today. Um, but you know, this finally answers the question and is a big development in terms of portable uh, multi-camera live production solutions, especially for Switcher Studio users. Uh, also of note, uh, Teradek had an iPad-based solution called AirMix. And um, AirMix, uh, Teradek decided to leave the market. Uh, T-E-R-A-D-E-K-A-I-R. And um, Teradek AirMix doo -doo -doo -doo, is uh, another multi-camera live switching app. Um, it handled multiple devices, multiple overlays. It did internal recording. Uh, it does a whole lot of things, um, but it is not the market that Teradek really serves with the rest of their products. And so, as it says at the top, as of January 30th, 2023, uh, Teradek has decided to leave this 
you know, this is end of life. This is no more supported. They made it free. So if you're looking into trying something out for your iPad, you can go to the iTunes store and download AirMix for free. And it actually has hardware interfaces <laughs> and has had hardware interfaces for the app for years. Um, but it is uh, a little software app, whereas Teradect is very much on the cloud services and high-end um, broadcast and filmmaking solutions. So this, this always seemed like a little bit of an odd duck for Teradek to have. It could have been sort of like a, a central hub for things, but they, they, they decided to not go that route and they decided to just like, listen, it's free, go get it, it's not supported, have fun. Um, so I just want to put that out there as well. If you have an iPad, an iPhone, a couple iPhones, a couple old iPhones, uh, I want to play around with something, this is free. Uh, and if you are interested in what it can and can't do, go check it out. Uh, I also did a couple comparison articles in stream, uh, streaming media. Again, I apologize, apologize for the backwards camera. In Streaming Media Magazine, uh, for which I am um, one of the authors. And you can... Um, pro uh, laptop. That's my laptop. There's my pro. Uh, you can check that out for free, play with it, and if that, it's that, if that then seems like something you actually want to delve into more and, you know, hey, this is really useful, this is something that I could actually make use of or I know people who could really use a solution like this um, and if AirMix doesn't work completely for you and, you know, because it's orphaned and everything, um, switch your studio Top Director and Cinemaker are three other solutions that are out there on the market, fully supported, active products, and I encourage you to go out and check them out. And I will also mention, circling back to NDI with our beloved friends at Bird Dog, um, Top Director is the app that actually supports NDI. So I can take my Bird Dog camera which is NDI, broadcast camera, and bring it in a top director. And if I had a little NDI converter box, going back again to that HDMI capture, I could use top director and capture the NDI in that way. So uh, with that, do, 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 I think that is all the comments. Do, 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 wrote a few items too. All right, I think we've been going for an hour and a half, and I appreciate you for everyone who has stuck around for the show, for... Um, hanging in. Uh, this NAB show was brought to you by Ayuba Communications. <laughs> My name is Anthony Barocas, and I have a Facebook channel called uh, Ayuba Communications, and uh, I have a YouTube channel called Ayuba Tech Thoughts. And you can tune in to me there, follow me there. I have a Twitter, but I'm not big on Twitter at the moment. Um, so I didn't even make a, a, a graphic for that. So I will bid you all adieu, and I appreciate you all for being here today.